Hi everyone. Today I am going to discuss about how to calculate phase delay from one port to another port in a transmission line. It can be coaxial line or it can be a micro strip line, strip line or anything. The workflow is same. Uh, let's take a simple coaxial line. It is almost uh, 30 mm length. My idea is to see the S parameter between the port 1 to port 2. So you can see the S11 is and S21 is over here. Very good transmission line. And when you calculate the phase delay from port 1 to port 2, as you see the frequency increases, the phase is linearly changing. At 5 gigahertz, it came out to be 261.18. And we will correlate this result with the theoretical data. And what all thing we will extra calculate is, uh, you can see I used a Teflon material for this. Uh, we can also discuss about epsilon effective, how we can calculate that. For this, what I will do is I will just go here, uh, go to my presentation. I'll tell you how to calculate this uh, electrical length or the phase from one point to another point, how much will be for the TMM in analytical way. Uh, this is came out from this particular expression gamma from equal to alpha plus J beta. Alpha is nothing but attenuation coefficient and phase constant is beta. And that is nothing but 2 pi by lambda. If you want to know the phase from one point to another, you just multiply that with the length of the cable. And you can you can also see uh, the, the if you express the same thing uh, when it comes to this is for the free space when when it comes to a gated medium with a dielectric then you need to calculate the epsilon effective uh, for that medium uh, in the coaxial cable uh, the dielectric uh, the electric fields are always within the uh, the inner and outer conductor that means within the uh, dielectric whereas in micro strip line you have a challenge you, your electric fields are within the dielectric some of the fields fringing wheels are within the air so the effective epsilon will be different than the dielectric of this micro strip whereas uh, it will be same as in the coaxial cable. What are the dielectric constant? You can consider that as a epsilon effective in a coaxial cable. With that one, let's do one calculation. So if I do that uh, calculation, my gated wavelength inside coaxial cable going to be 41.4 mm. And if I wanted to calculate my phase from uh, one end to another end, you can clearly see it's calculated as uh, 260 degree and it is nothing but beta energies. The expression, uh, the expression or the derivations are given in this particular thing. And this is exactly matching with our uh, simulations data. Over here, if I see the phase, it is exactly matching. So you can also see, uh, calculate the gamma over here. If you go to model uh, solution report, you can plot uh, alpha or gamma, this is, uh, sorry, alpha or beta. Uh, the gamma will be provided. Uh, not that you need to have a wave port at the both end of the transmission lines. So if I plot real, then it will be alpha. Uh, if I select imaginary, it will be beta. So whatever you're getting is the gated phase constant inside the transmission line. So I can back calculate if I know the beta, I can back calculate my epsilon effective from this one. Uh, the expression for calculating the epsilon effective, uh, it's given here. It is nothing but uh, beta into lambda by 2 pi the whole square. Uh, the expression you can back calculate, back calculate from this particular expression. And if I divide that in, or again further dividing into beta into speed of the light divided by 2 pi into frequency, uh, the whole square will be the my epsilon effective. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have put this expression in this particular column. I will copy that expression 
to save the time i'll go to this imaginary of uh, gamma nothing but beta so i'll copy this expression so you can see beta into c0 divided by 2 pi f the whole square going to be my epsilon effective if i plot new report you can clearly see this is all 2.1 okay so the 2.1 is my dielectric constant i am getting exactly 2.1 as my epsilon effective so you can back calculate your epsilon effective you can back calculate the phase and that will exactly match with the measurement or analytic sorry analytical expressions let's come back into and then another interesting thing this is nothing but a micro strip line uh, here what you will see is uh, you will have a totally different case here uh, if i go and explain it you can see the electric fields are within the uh, dielectric it's there in the air so your epsilon effective is distributed between your dielectric and air you need to calculate what is epsilon effective coming out from here so i can use the same expression i wanted to calculate my epsilon effective and before that uh, if you go and check the fr4 it is going to be 4.4 let's see what is epsilon effective here uh, I use this uh, same expression so you can directly go here and uh, plot the gamma imaginary and copy this uh, same expression here so I already use the same expression at this point and click on new report and you can see even though if I have a 4.4 dielectric constant, my epsilon effective is changing here because of these, uh, uh, the finching fields are going to be very different or it's going to be within the confined, going to be confined within the dielectrics as higher frequency goes. That's the reason it's slightly increasing. And uh, you can see this is going to be around uh, 3.34 uh is a permittivity epsilon effective at uh, 5 gigahertz uh, let's go back to our uh, presentation let's see what is happening in the micro strip line as you see here uh, the same expressions are here epsilon effective we calculated from the uh, imaginary guided wavelength and uh, we calculated the epsilon effective it is about uh, 20 uh, mm substrate with FR4 we could get around 3.34 as our epsilon effective with that gated wavelength going to be 32.73 you can calculate the phase delay from one point to the another point another port it's turned out to be 2 point uh, it's 220 degree so if I go back into my HFSS model, you can see the way one port and second port, you have a transmission line over here. And when I go back and see the angle between the port 1 and port 2 at 5 gigahertz is very close to the analytical expression. It is 220 by analytical, it's 225 by the simulations. So you can, you can calculate everything in the simulation like what is your epsilon effective what is your phase and that will always match with uh, uh, your analytical expressions so hope you got some idea about how to extract the epsilon effective how to calculate the phase uh, delay from one port to another port at particular frequency uh, if you want to see this exact phase always remember you are starting the simulation from the zero uh, then only the phase, uh, the phase going to start from zero and going to linearly increase with respect to frequency.